Welcome to New Hampshire's Business, I'm Fred Coker. New Hampshire's seacoast communities are at increasing risk for sea level rise, and let me show you uh, some of the information. Uh, relative uh, sea level in New Hampshire is already rising. It's due to accelerated rate of surface ice thawing in Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. Rising groundwater and flooding risks could be up to three miles inland over time. Now, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers report recently, sea level rise across coastal New England of 1.7 inches in five years, 3.6 in 10, and 5.6 inches in 15. I understand now it's already over two. With me to talk about this is somebody who is very involved with all of this. Her name is Kirsten Howard, and she's coordinator of the Coastal Program for the New Hampshire Department of en uh, Environmental Services. Welcome. Thanks for having me. And a myriad of other agencies that partner with you. Um, you just had two public hearings on the seacoast about this, and that the whole point is you're, supposed, you're trying to give them updated information, right? That's right. And get feedback. Yes. The New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services is required to work with multiple state agencies to update the best science we have about coastal flood risk every five years. Okay, here's some of the science. Let's go to the map. And uh, here is a map of the seacoast, the 18 miles of seacoast we have in New Hampshire from Portsmouth down to uh, Seabrook. And uh, uh, Kirsten, explain what these colors are. So this map shows us what we can expect to see for possible inundation from sea level rise and also sea level rise induced groundwater rise within the coast in New Hampshire. And the red colors show you areas where because of sea level rise, we can also expect to see groundwater rise in those areas at deeper depths, at higher, greater magnitudes. And the blue areas show you areas where we also may experience some groundwater rise at slightly smaller magnitudes. So you can see that the effects of sea level rise extend quite far inland. Now, whether we see water at the surface in all of these areas depends very much on how close the groundwater level is to the land right. surface. Right. Now, uh, here are the communities. Let's go to the graphic. Uh, here are the communities that uh, you're looking at, or you're talking to rather, uh, Hampton, Hampton Falls, Northampton, Rye, Seabrook, Newcastle, Durham, Madbury, Newfields, Stratham, Greenland, Dover, Newmarket, Exeter, Rollinsford, Portsmouth, and Newington. That's the seacoast. That is. Those are our coastal tidally influenced communities in New Hampshire. They've been involved in various efforts to help plan proactively mm -hmm. for sea level rise in the coast and have been involved in the science and technical advisory panel report that you're referencing tonight. So the process you're following with these communities and with the, uh, I understand also the uh, uh, Rockingham and Stratham, uh, Stratford County Planning Commissions, um, how often do you get together with them and how much is all of this changing? Good question. So the STAP report, as we call it, uh, was developed over the course of the last year and uh, the multiple agencies and the regional planning commissions met several times. Uh, the science part of the report was developed by University of New Hampshire researchers and externally reviewed. And then we're using that science with the communities to develop guidance, which is out for draft right now for public comment. The sea level rise is rising and I understand it's rising even faster than anybody expected. It is rising. We're seeing some areas that are vulnerable, especially vulnerable in the coast, dealing with high tide flooding during full moons today. And uh, they have taken action by uh, conducting vulnerability assessments in yep. their communities to evaluate what is really at risk. Yeah, I mean, uh, v property values, uh, even things like cemeteries that may be in a low level. Historic resources, for sure, and um, and planning ahead is certainly important. Yeah, and now, uh, d real quickly, just let's uh, go to the uh, list of uh, agencies that are involved uh, on this graphic, um, and you can see the new, uh, environmental services, of course, Homeland Security, Emergency Management, uh, UNH, uh, the uh, Planning Commissions in Rockingham and Stratford Counties, and all also the Department of Transportation, Fish and Game, and so forth. Um, and finally, this quote, and this is a quote from your report. 
Uh, I thought this was interesting. Create a bold vision, start immediately and respond incrementally and opportunistically as projected coastal flood risks increase over time. And by the way, just as a final note before we wrap up, Kirsten, you know this, um, there was a report uh, by the Danish uh, Meteorological Institute that 11 billion tons of surface ice in Greenland went into the ocean in August in one day. That is indicative of the kind of rise that we're going to be expecting, isn't it? It's important for us to keep an eye on that and really important for us to update the science every five years so we can plan appropriately. Kirsten Howard, coordinator of the Coastal Program for New Hampshire Department of Empl uh, Environmental Services. Thank you. Thanks.